Hey guys, um, just wanted to make this video today and uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the things I forgot to mention last time, my last video, and also, uh, you know, just talk about how crappy this is to go through. I today I'm feeling really, <clears throat> really bad. Um, haven't really wanted to get out of bed and. Uh, the past two days have been pretty bad for uh, depression for me and just not feeling like I want to get out of bed and deal with the day and um, anxiety has been unreal just anxiety that goes on uh, panics that go on for hours on end and they just don't stop the only thing I can do to help with that is you know, take, um, you know, medication or some, you know, anxiety medication, which I really don't like doing, but, uh, as I'm going through this healing crisis, you know, I just don't really know what to expect, and honestly, I, um, am not really surprised anymore when I start to feel bad, be really bad, because you just never know what, um, what's going to happen. Anyways, uh, Last time I made a video, I uh, forgot to talk about something that is pretty important with Lyme. And, in fact, it's probably, if not as important as Lyme, um, maybe even more so. And that is the co-infections that come along with Lyme's disease. And uh, a lot of people don't really address, a lot of doctors don't address this issue, even if they know what Lyme is. But... Uh, I was also diagnosed with um, Bartonella and Babesia with my Lyme and that's just complicated things a lot as far as treatment goes and feeling bad. Uh, now I've been primarily treating the Lyme but while I'm doing that it is killing off some of the Bartonella and the Babesia which makes the Herxing a lot worse. My doctor has been trying to kind of take it slow so that I don't feel so bad, but um, it's it's inevitable to get rid of more than you know what you want uh, when you do these kinds of treatments, and so uh, you know it's been rough. It's been really rough. I can't explain the way my head feels right now. It's kind of like I'm. Uh, underwater kind of feeling. Um, actually, somebody posted on a uh, Lyme's disease message board something that I wanted to read everybody because it really describes well how it feels to be going through this um, what they call neuro um, borreliosis, if I pronounce that right, which is basically um, borreliella bacteria in your brain. And uh, this person said. I just want to know if there's anything, I just want to know if anyone else has gone through or is going through what I am. I have never felt so horrible in my entire life. There is nothing like it. The symptoms which sound like an objective thing, but really feel like a part of you are agonizing at times. I do not even feel like the same person. It's difficult to even put the feelings or symptoms into words, almost as if it would be trying to describe an emotion. Feeling totally out of it, hooked up to an IV of hard drugs, headache, warmth in head, dizzy, sound sensitive, complete stress and anxiety that can turn to overwhelming panic and sinking feelings. Sound sensitive, um, brain fog or memory problems are an understatement. More like feeling as though half of your brain is totally missing, not even how human consciousness should feel. Detached, unreal, surreal, emotions on total roller coaster, from the darkest depression to sinking, hours long anxiety attacks to anger and rage. Things look different. It's hard to say what is off depth, color, dimension, brightness. Static over everything. Sometimes feeling like you'll just lose your mind and go off the deep end. Is there anybody else who's been through this? I'm having difficulty even forming a thought or speaking from my Herx reaction. If your Lyme disease revolves around pain and arthritis, then your words will be of no comfort to me. 
because I'm talking about neurological Lyme's disease. And when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I'm going through. And um, it, it helps a little. All I can tell you is if you're going through this, you got to, you know, you got to just keep telling yourself that there are other people who have been there. And um, it's been one of the only things that have made me, um, helped me through some of the really rough days when I just felt like, uh, I can't go on. And the fact that the treatment and getting better from, from this disease, uh, means getting so much worse makes it 10 times harder. And, uh, sometimes I just want to completely stop the treatment because I just don't want to feel like this anymore. But, um, you know, I, you just got to do it. And so uh, that's where I'm at. Um, back to kind of what that, that uh, message board was talking about. Uh, yesterday, as an example, I was trying to write myself a note just so that I, um, just something, so I would remember to do something today. And when I went to write on the piece of paper, I it was almost as if there was a disconnect between my vision and my brain and my hand. I mean, I, I was able to write the note, but it didn't feel like I was actually controlling my hand, almost like um, I knew what I wanted to write and what I wanted to say, and my hand was doing it, but it was almost like I was watching somebody else write. Such a strange feeling. Uh, the the best way that I could think to even explain it would be um, imagine taking a video camera and looking through the lens and then looking at um, the piece of paper with uh, through the lens of the camera and look at your hand and then try to write and uh, that feeling of a that's like a disconnected kind of feeling is kind of what um, everything feels like for me not just writing but writing in particular because you have to focus on something in order to get that task done and everything just feels unreal it feels um, you know like I'm in a foreign body or I'm in a place that I don't know even though I'm at home I don't feel like I'm really here I don't feel connected to my body even all my senses are kind of dull my touch and uh, that sort of thing is 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 like uh, it feels like I'm not really in my body, and it sounds strange, but it's how it it's kind of how it makes you feel. Um, and it's scary because you it, it it messes with your brain to where you think that I'm never going to get better, and this is never going to go away, um, and for me at least as I get worse every day it's hard to stay positive and it's hard to think to myself well I will get better and this is going to get better but um, I'm just taking every day as it comes because there's not much more I can do I can't handle more than that and you know my life has just been on pause I I was supposed to work this summer not happening schools pretty much stopped um, friends and you know everybody is going on with their lives and but yet they don't understand what this is like and they say well you look okay um, so anyways you know people will ask you how, you how are you feeling today and uh, sometimes to be honest it's hard to even answer that question when you know you feel like like crap but um, you just don't know what to say to them and that's it's hard how do you explain this feeling to somebody that you can't even get your own hand your own head around how do you explain that it's been tough and most people don't even know what Lyme's disease is or what they know is very limited and it's difficult to explain to somebody how horrible this thing can actually become and um, you know, people have this stereotype that 
everybody with Lyme's disease is crippled and they can't walk or they have joint problems and you know um, aside from neck problems that I'm having I really haven't had any uh, of those issues mine has been affecting my nervous system and uh, you know it just affects everybody differently but something I did want to mention on here um, is uh, this documentary that I just bought and a good friend of mine who has been through, uh, she's actually a huge supporter of uh, the Limes uh, Association here in, this, in Michigan where I'm from. And anyway, she recommended this documentary about Lyme's disease. And I have it here. The name of it is um, Under Our Skin, if you can see it. Um, if you want to go to their website, I will uh, post the link at the end of the video. You can buy this movie, uh, I think it was about $40, and um, they gave us a free copy because we bought it during May, which was Lyme Awareness Month. But anyways, um, it's a great movie. It, it goes into detail about uh, like four or five different people who have Lyme's or have had it and what their story was, their treatment. Uh, and then it goes into the political uh, nature of Lyme's disease and talks about what current treatments are, why insurance companies don't want to pay for their patients treatments, um, the uh, guidelines from the uh, Infectious Disease Society of America, what they say, you know, the typical treatment for Lyme's disease should be. And uh, I mean, it's just an awesome movie that goes into details that um, you just kind of have to see. And, it, and it's really good if you're going through Lyme for uh, your family members to watch and your friends to watch because it will give them a good idea as to what you're going through. And uh, the first time I watched it, I was actually kind of uh, angry and I felt kind of uh, relieved too. Angry because this disease is not publicized and yet it's more prevalent than HIV and West Nile virus. Um, you know, over 300,000 people a year get infected with Lyme's disease, but as little as 1 in 10 ever get a correct diagnosis. People get diagnosed with MS, fibromyalgia, lupus, um, anxiety disorders, hosts of uh, psych um, psychiatric uh, disorders, um, chronic fatigue, you name it. And these people, um, they just never get a diagnosis. And, you know, you look at the case of AIDS, um, you know, 30,000, 30, 40,000 cases of AIDS in this country. And, you know, in no way am I meaning to demean that. But my point is, is if there was as much awareness about Lyme's disease as there were about some of these other diseases, I would have to imagine there would be better treatments for people. And... That's something that I'm trying to get out there and, and make people aware that this is an epidemic in our country, not just in the East Coast, but it's in every state in America, on every continent, and it's just becoming um, something we can't ignore anymore. The fact that uh, only you know 20,000 or so cases were reported to the CDC last year, and possibly well over 300,000 people were infected, just goes to show you how much is wrong in our our health system that we can't diagnose these people. I went and had to see 15 doctors before I could get a diagnosis. And um, in fact, you know, when, after I got my diagnosis, I sent my reports back to some of the doctors I had seen, and, and they were just like, "Well, these tests aren't 100% accurate, and you know, you don't have Lyme or whatever." And uh, it's frustrating, and it's frustrating when you know something is wrong with your body and you know that you're not making it up, but the problem is these doctors drill into your head for so long that um, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, once you finally get that diagnosis, you don't even know if you should believe it because it seems like finally someone takes you seriously, but you know, is it real? And I honestly went 
a while without actually accepting the fact that I had Lyme disease and I'm just starting to come to terms with the fact that I do and having you know having so many people say uh, it's it's stress or you know for the first time in your life you're um, realizing that you're not mortal that's what one of the, the doctors said to me you know he says that's making you realize um, you've had some stressful times and so now you realize that you're not invincible and you know you're having a hard time coming to grips with that reality so after going through that for long enough you just sort of start to discredit doctors in general and one thing I'm learning is that you absolutely have to be your own advocate if you're not doctors will walk all over you they will give you prescription after prescription after prescription to cover up your symptoms and get you out of their office they don't want to hear Lyme's disease they don't know about Lyme's disease um, at one point I was in an ur the urgent care in having the worst panic attack I've ever had telling them uh, something was wrong and this just happened to be after I took my first dose of antibiotics for the um, Lyme urine antigen test that I had to do the first night I took these antibiotics it sent me into a major uh, reaction killing off Lyme and I said uh, I told the the, the uh, urgent care doctor that um, either I'm having a reaction to the antibiotics uh, allergic reaction or you know I'm killing these bacteria off so quickly it's just making me go crazy and I said you know I think I have Lyme's disease I'm being tested for it I'm just not sure yet and uh, he goes oh Lyme disease that's the one from the tick <laughs> and I said yeah he goes, oh, well, I'm not really sure what the uh, literature says about that. You know, I don't really think you could feel any worse going on medication to treat it. But, uh, you know, if that's something you think is possible, then, yeah, you should definitely check that out. And it's like you're the doctor, you know. You're the one who's supposed to be 